welcome to the D Spot. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so honored. Of course. I, I, I was very excited to have you. I'm probably the only nerd that's excited to talk about divorce, but maybe that's because I'm a couples therapist. I want to introduce you as the host of this amazing podcast called The Divorce Hour. Tell me about what was your inspiration to be like, yeah, I want to make myself a podcast about divorce because that's like the happiest topic in the world. What, what, how, what brought you to that? The funny thing is, wasn't even on the radar. Okay. Um, so I, a lot of times, so we live in an age of Google. We'll start there. And when yep. people Google me, all they see is, why does your, why is your name synonymous with celebrity? I'm like, well, because that's what I did for 20 years. So why divorce? Well, in February, 2018, I filed for a divorce okay. and I knew nothing about the process. But anyway, just to jump ahead, while I was in the middle of a horrific, horrific uh, divorce and Googling was too overwhelming when you were looking to understand a divorce, yeah. I started a column about divorce. I had noticed that in the world of journalism that we had correspondence for everything. Mm -hmm. And I don't mean just entertainment. I mean, foreign affairs, even though most people don't even know where like half these countries are on the map. And we had transportation and we had shopping and pets, but we didn't have divorce. And I was just like, um, hello. And so how did anybody overlook that? So I started this column. It was the column that caught the attention of a radio network okay. because somebody was going through a divorce and was reading these columns religiously. And so while cleaning up from dinner with plates in my hand, I got a phone call uh, from a publicist that I knew and the network was on the other phone. And that's really how it just kind of happened. That's like astonishing that we didn't have any <laughs> more resources for divorce. I mean, it's so prevalent. It's such a big part of our life and we need support to like, so I'm so glad that you were able to like find the need for it and you stepped in and we couldn't ask for somebody with a better personality to help us guide us through it. You, you are so good at like normalizing the experience and kind of like talking about the emotion of it. And the fact that you're willing to be vulnerable and talk about your own situation is meaningful because it doesn't sound preachy. It doesn't sound judgy. It's like, Hey, I've been there, get a cup of coffee. Let's sit down. Let's talk about it. Right. So how how was that for you to like how was that decision to like do I put my own stuff out there, too? Because I imagine that was scary. Terrifying. But what I did was even though I put a lot of me out there, I just pulled out all the names, which is really what I do with every column and every episode. A lot of times I will take things from either my own situation. I'll be out with girlfriends and they'll be telling me something and all of a sudden I kind of dip into my pocketbook and they'll be like, am I an episode or am I a <laughs> And I'm just like, but this is, and I'm like, you're probably both, but we take out all the names. We even take out locations. But when we have an expert explain what these situations are, I, I focus on them for a reason, because what I found doing this show and working on the column, so many people are going through the same thing. And the one thing they all have in common is they're confused. They're not understanding. They're getting frustrated by the process. As a journalist, I talk to an everybody audience. So that could be you, the professional. It can be you, the person going through it. I get people's families tuning in because a lot of times, who do we turn to for support? Our families. Yeah. I get employers. I get friends. Uh, because am I friends with you or am I friends with them? Are we allowed to stay friends with this? Are we allowed to stay friends with them? Can we post pictures that we were with them? What do we love to talk about? So all these things, even for children, uh, there's, there's, I always say there's something for everyone. Yeah. And when people say there's an app for that, I'm like, yeah, yeah, I got an expert for that. Because <laughs> it, it, it does, it happens to everybody. And yeah. if you and I were to walk down the street and we randomly pulled 10 people, Either they've been the product of a divorce, they're going through a divorce, their colleague is going through a divorce, their college roomie, their neighbor, a sibling, everybody is affected and impacted by it. But yet, we did not have anybody out there designated in the world of journalism talking about this. And I think I love the word you used, normalizing it. Everybody's still so ashamed. Everyone's like, I'm getting divorced. What? I'm getting divorced. Like they whisper it. Don't whisper it. You've done nothing wrong. Um, and when people say, oh, I'm so sorry. Okay. Don't shame them. Why don't you say something like, 
How can I help you? Mm. Is everybody okay? Yeah. What can I do? Uh, do you, do, do your kids need a ride? You know what? I was running to the store. Do, do you need anything? Say something like, like that, but don't make people feel ashamed. You don't know the circumstances. It could be a very good situation for everybody involved. And, and that's how we're trying to steer conversations. Yeah. So every expert provides a lot of knowledge, a lot of information, but if you really read every column, which we must get you in, and you listen to every episode, they are jam-packed with positive affirmations and yes. things that are going to help people. And I use this hashtag all the time, build back better. Yes. And I wrote that down. I wrote down a quote that you gave because I want you to talk about it. It really impacted me as I was listening to some. You said divorce gives you clarity. You can focus on the reality you can create for yourself. Make a list of changes you want to make in your new life. I thought, girl, preach. I wish there was more people out there that's like, well, I'm embarrassed and I'm hiding. And when I fill out one of those forms now that says divorced, widowed, separated, like I cringe. And what you're saying is, this doesn't have to be the end. This is like a new beginning. Your life is not ending. You have like these amazing opportunities. Talk about that. I love that. Divorce gives you clarity. Yeah, it does. I think once people have gone through all the emotions of it, and I mean, this is your space, you know about all those different emotions we experience. It could be like through a divorce or the passing of a loved one. But once you go through all that, I always say to somebody, play the song, I can see clearly now the rain is gone. Mm. When I, it was the craziest thing was after I signed my divorce papers and I got in the car, that was the first song that came on the radio. And it was like the craziest, craziest thing. And I sat there in the parking lot listening to it. Mm. And all of a sudden, even though it was, it was a very difficult uh, situation, all of a sudden I felt the warmth from the sun through the, through the windshield. And I really paid attention to those lyrics. I'm like, Oh my God, I have clarity. Yes. And I kept talking to myself in the car. People must have thought I was nuts um, if they saw me doing it. But it's true. You can take yourself out of what was and kind of look in. And you may say to yourself, this was the wrong situation for me. And you know what? I'm now going to go into a better place. Not only will I be better for myself, I will be better for all those around me. So if you are a single parent with children still at home, I'm telling you, you're going to be a better parent yeah. to them. You're going to be a better team member at the office, to your friends and to your family. And it, it, it takes steps. But when I finally stepped out and I started building my new life, hashtag build back better, all of a sudden I was like, oh my God. Oh my God. And, and I remember I just kept saying that I would have all these, all these moments where I just kept saying those words over and over and it, it does, it's not going to happen overnight or no, a month, no. but, but you do get it. And when you see that it just makes the healing process go a little bit quicker. And then you realize all the things you want as you begin to push forward, what you want in a relationship, maybe what you want in a job, maybe things that you want also in, in, in your life that you never got a chance to do before. This is, you know, a divorce is about opportunity. And I just wrote in a recent column, you know what the D stands for in a divorce? Do over. And so you can do that a lot. And don't we all want to do over or like backseas, like when we were on the, on the playground, it's, it's a great opportunity to do that. I think that what you're touching on is something that I try to kind of get my clients to understand as well because the universal experience that at least I see from my chair in my office is there's this concept that I'm a failure because the relationship ended, right? And and I don't know where that concept comes from, but like what you're talking about is also something that I like to share with people is it was successful for the time that you were together. Whatever that part of the journey that you were on together, it is now just come that you've gone in different directions. You still went through those milestones together and that was the person you were meant to go through them with, right? And we ask so much of our partners today and we're living so much longer and our relationships are lasting so much longer that it's probably unrealistic that that person is going to be able to sustain being in your life for as long as we expect, right? I mean. 
back in the day, you would get married when you were, what, 13 and 15 because I had good childbearing hips and you were good with the plow and we could, like, you know, keep the farm going versus now, like, you need to go shoe shopping with me. I want you to be my confidant. We have to have amazing sex. And it's like there's different things if you met in your 20s when you're in your 50s you are not the same people and if you have not tended to your relationship not because you're a bad person because you didn't know better it's not shocking that you end up here but the way that we treat each other about that quote unquote failure is the thing that is so hard for me to see time and time again and i love this message that you kind of are like speaking to that with what you're doing with your podcast yeah, and I love the fact that you use the word failure because that's what people say all the time. Yeah. And I say to people, okay, hold on to that thought for a minute. I was actually just having a conversation with a friend of mine and I said, what is your greatest accomplishment? And I said, first thing that comes to your mind, she goes, I'm a mom. I go, bingo. Well, you couldn't have done that if it wasn't for that person. Mm. Even though it didn't end the way you might've thought it was going to end, Yeah. you achieved your greatest accomplishment with them. And that's what you need to hold on to and move forward. And I say that all the time. I would not have my kids if it wasn't for the person who I was with. Didn't work out. But you know what? Does it make me a failure? No. I accomplished exactly what I wanted to. I got my kids. And when people say like if if they're starting to transition their life, like a big thing for people is uh, leaving the marital home and going to a new place. Well, what's the one thing people find when they're packing? Their wedding album. And somebody had said to me, I can't look at it because again, I failed. I'm like, no, you should keep it. They're like, why? I said, you should teach your kids that at one point things were good with the other parent. I said, okay, it didn't end up that way. And your life is not as maybe right now as happy as that moment. But that's an important lesson for your kids to know. They came from a place of love. And so I still have mine. It's in my attic. And one day when my kids want to look at it, they, they should. Yeah, because what you're saying is I'm not going to throw away my high school yearbook because I didn't finish college. Right. Yeah. If I say that I'm a failure at college because I decided, you know what, I got this great job as an entrepreneur where they don't need a college diploma, but, you know, I didn't finish it. So I should throw away my high school yearbook with all those memories of what I went through. That is what shaped you, that the person that you are now is the person that has the resilience, that has the insight, that has the perspective of what relationships are about and what you want them to look like moving forward. You don't just throw away all the things that shaped you. No, not at all. Not at all. And if you can really say from the bottom of your heart and with a clear conscience, I gave this relationship my all, that still puts you in the winner's circle. And sometimes relationships just go the distance. Sometimes people need to leave. It could be domestic violence. There could be a safety issue. There could be addiction. Again, this is all your space and what you do so well. But but we we don't really know. But if you can say really, I gave this my all, I tried, I tried therapy, I tried this, I tried that, then you know what, bam, you deserve a medal for for your efforts. And in this new journey that you will go on, you will make different decisions. And you know what, kids are resilient, they will be okay. In fact, some kids will say their greatest role models were a step parent or somebody new, like a bonus friend, as as parents, some parents call them that come into these children's lives. So two things I want to make sure we talk about today is the do's and don'ts of divorce. And then I kind of want to talk a little bit about how do we deal with the grief of divorce, because that also is a thing that, you know, you can accept that this relationship didn't work, but you're still going to experience grief. So let's first go to what are the do's and don'ts, because there's a lot of people screwing up their divorce. (laughs) And I see it all day long. And I'm like, ouch, I don't know why you, okay, wow, interesting choice. So what would you say are some of the rules of do's and don'ts? So one of the don'ts, don't put everything on social media. Don't oh, put- yay. Thank you. Yeah, but don't, yes. Don't one. disparage your partner and write a long, like, five paragraphs about all the things that they did wrong to screw you over. Why yeah. is that? Why is that not a good call? Well, there's a couple reasons. One, if you um, are trying to reach a settlement, if you are in a situation that maybe needs to be 
presided by a judge and you're in a contentious situation and you put all that out there, that's called slander. Ah, and they will use okay. that against you. Okay. So in situation, uh, there was a couple and she was putting it all out there on Facebook. You were reading it like hashtag OMG. And I ran into the former husband and they said that she didn't get a dime in terms of what she could have. Why? Because she disparaged him in a public forum. It hurt him mentally, emotionally, professionally. And guess what? You know, she she got nothing. Uh, it, not cool. I mean, don't do that. Also, we live in an age of social media where we are constantly scrolling on our screens. Is that really fair to do to your kids? If yeah. your kids are on social media, do they need to see you disparaging mom or dad? No. And even if they're younger, guess what? Those kids' parents see it. And they may say over dinner, oh, my God, did you see what your friend yeah. little Susie's parent was writing about the other one? I mean, do your kids really need to be put in the, uh, be the subject of that at, at school lunch or on the playground? Not cool. I mean, well, and your your kids feel then that they have to be loyal to one of you. Like, does then you're sort of asking them, do I step in and protect mom or dad? Do I go say something to the other one? Do I like try to hide it from them? You're putting them in an adult situation when they're already experiencing their own grieving of what's going on with their relationship, and they don't need all the nitty gritty details. That's not their space with you. No, no, and you know what. The public doesn't need to know it either. This is between the two of you. That's it. Nobody else. And guess what? When you start airing too much dirty laundry, nobody wants to read it. Nobody cares. And I have found that when people did that, people avoid seeing that person. So let's take, for example, um, you know, your, your neighbor does it and you see your neighbor, you're going to be like, oh, no, no, I, I don't want to see it because I don't want to hear more of it. And what they, it's like, you don't want that. You're trying yeah. to build a support system, not push people away. Yeah. So don't do it. <laughs> okay. Great not tip. Good. So legally, it's not a smart move. You also don't want to do that to the people that you care about. And it's not a good look. It's not really in alignment with your character. It means that you're angry and that you don't have a filter, right? Like that's something you talk about with your therapist. You do some journaling journal. about it. Yes. Or yeah. a journal. Yes. <laughs> So I'm sure uh, uh, you talk about with your clients all the time, journaling is a wonderful thing. And it's, it's like, it's like when we used to keep a diary when we were young, I'm probably dating myself, but you put all your private thoughts in there. So if you were mad at mom or dad, cause you know, they didn't let you have extra time on the phone or watch extra TV because they wanted you to read and do homework. You may say, dear diary, yes. I can't. That's where it belongs. You, you want can to put expletives. You friends. can have uh, run-on sentences. You don't have to worry about capitalization. It's it's the best place for your frustration. Yes. So okay. Or, or I know a lot of times, like, I'll go, I'll get together with my girlfriends, and everybody gets that moment where we just kind of go around the table, and you can vent, and we find the humor in it, and leave it there because we know what's talked about at the table stays at the table. It does not go in a public forum. It's just us gals getting together, uh, supporting each other. That's it. And okay. that's and like I said, or with your therapist, but people have to always remember who the audience is. And remember the audience is always going to be your children. You've got to keep them in mind. Can you talk about some of the do's and don'ts and how you tell your children about the upcoming separation or divorce? How does that, how should they do that well? So I feel that it's so individualized because there are people who do it together. There are people who do it separately. But I think the most important thing children need to know is it's not their fault, yeah. um, that they are loved, that one thing that is never going to change is that I am always, you know, your mom, I'm always your dad. This one is always your brother, your sister, or whatever. And, and that never changes. And so while the family dynamic may, may, may shift a little because maybe one parent is going to move out, maybe everybody's going to move out and everyone's going to get new homes, you, not, the foundation doesn't change. And the foundation is we're always a family. And I think it's important to also, in that part, also talk with them about that there's a different kind of love between mom and dad and the kind that mom and dad have for kids, right? Is that important? To absolutely. And so 
people will say, well, you don't love mom anymore. You don't love dad anymore. No, that, that, those feelings may have changed, but I always say the love everybody has for you, that never changed. That, 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 that always, I always say to my kids, the one thing I used to say to you every day when you were like in your little bassinet or crib is I fall more and more in love with you every second of every day. Mm -hmm. So the only thing that's going to change is I'm going to love you a lot more and you're going to be like, oh, stop, mom, uh, <laughs> kind of thing. Because they say it all the time. Oh, mom, stop. No, 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 no. Mom, stop. And, you know, kind of thing. Um, but but that, that never changes. And I say to people, and this is something that a lot of people have a hard time with, is the, the what happens when it comes time to parenting time, where kids are at one parent versus another. And I say, be happy for your kids. And if one side wants to give them a lot of stuff, well, that's what kids like, be happy for them. I said, and don't look at it as you're not being included or they posted pictures without me. They're having so much fun without me. I'm like, don't look at it that way. I said, you got to shift. Think about all the things that you can do that you never had the opportunity for um, before. And what do I mean by that? And this is especially true with women. Moms always complain, I can't go get my hair done. I have no time. I can't go to exercise class. I have no time. Well, guess what? You got time. Yeah. I'm like, especially if the kids are there for the weekend. So join an exercise class. Go call your college roommates who you've never had time to see and you've always had to say no to. You know, take advantage of this time. This is where you can hashtag build back better because you have time to focus on you. And I know therapists who I interview all the time always talk about self-care, self-love. We got to build back self-esteem. This is perfect opportunity to do it. Your kids are fine. If there's a problem, there'll be a phone call. Um, but, but take this opportunity for you. And I think people don't understand that. And be happy for your kids. Remember, I always say to my friend uh, who's, who's having trouble with it right now, how would you feel if your mom told you you couldn't go to your dad's? How would you feel? She goes, well, my, I said, no, let's make believe your parents got divorced and your mom said, you can't go to dad's. I, I just can't believe him. He's this. I said, how would that make you feel? She goes, I got it. I said, that's the mentality of your kids. Be happy for them. Yeah. I get want it. to so see much. them still having a relationship because you're really in a problem if you see your co-parent not being involved with the kids. So be grateful because that isn't always necessarily the case. Sometimes they just check out and then you've got a different situation. So be grateful that the co-parent is still actively participating. And if a co-parent or if the other parent does not want to participate, okay, you know what? You just throw a little bit more, uh, you know, onto the pile yeah. and it's, it's, it's really okay. Sometimes um, I get asked a lot, Alyssa, have you done columns on how to answer questions? I said, we get a lot of this. And again, we, we have an expert for that on how to answer certain questions. And sometimes you just have to speak the truth without bashing the other side. Kids are so smart now. They see things, they pick up on things, and they have more access to information than, than I did growing up. So if people say, well, my mom or dad said they couldn't do this, and then they go on social media and they see that parent's at a party or a game or a concert or a weekend away with friends. You know, how do you explain that? So you wanna, you wanna, I, I'm not a therapist, but I always say, speak truth. Don't lose your credibility with your kids, but do it in a way that you're not bashing the other side. That's not fair, but don't lie to your kids either. I'm like, that's not fair either. I said, Find a happy medium where if you were that child and your parent was explaining this to you, how would you want to hear it? You know, what what would make you feel okay? You, you almost have to kind of go back in time and put yourself in your child's shoes. I love that. That's a helpful filter to run everything past. Like if you're in doubt, run it through how would you feel if it was your childhood and your parents were subjecting you to this? I think that's a helpful kind of nice place to like begin these these conversations with themselves can you talk a little bit about nesting because it has some buzz with some of my clients and it seems extremely difficult to do and what what is it and how, how are you seeing it working 
So nesting is where um, everybody, the mom and dad uh, decide, or parents, I should say, decide to keep the marital residence. Mm -hmm. So that, so that they usually do that because nobody wants to let go of it. They want to keep the kids in the home. Okay. So how does it work? So we'll, we'll go with parent A, parent B. So um, on parent A's allocated time, which will be worked out into now people call it a custody agreement or a parenting plan. Uh, parent A stays there, parent B moves out. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they get an apartment together because in this economy where inflation's at a 40 year high, um, people are saying, if we're going to have two residences, it's better to have two than three. It's more economic. Uh, to do it this way. So let's say parent B goes to the apartment, parent A stays there. When it's parent A, when parent A's time is up, they leave, they go to the other residence, parent B slides in um, and stays there. Does it work? It depends. I mean, as you know, every, I say every divorce is a snowflake. They're all individualized. No two are the same. While it may work for some people, it may not for others. So I always say, if you want it, try it out. Why not make a make a um, make a plan on how long you guys are going to do this, okay. and you may even want to sit down if everybody's using attorneys or get an attorney that can work with you guys to work out the rules. Because as you know, sometimes people don't follow them, and you don't want a problem. You're trying to limit the conflict. So the rules may be: here's who's allowed in the home on everybody's time. You cannot bring um, a potential partner. It's desic the home is designated for the children and all their friends. You want to have, you know, maybe like the girls over to play Marjan, the guys over to watch the game, fine, but really set the rules. And that way it's fair for everybody. Most importantly, a lot less confusing for the kids. Yeah, and again, no. the, the, the best takeaway is what you just said, is that you have to have some rules in place. It can't just be a free-for-all that you're yeah. figuring out as you go along. You have to anticipate that maybe your life is going to change or your focus is going to change or you'll bring more people into your life. As much as you don't want to believe your partner could do that, you'd rather them do it now while they're still like tentatively discussing this. Correct. And then people also, so let's say for the parents, everybody has designated places where they sleep. So maybe one person keeps the master bedroom. The other person gets the guest room. A lot of people have uh, basements mm -hmm. that uh, they have renovated and many of them have bedrooms down there. So somebody may take that, but be very specific when you do this and make sure everybody stays on the same page because that is probably the most important. You also want to work out how the bills are getting paid. Uh, that's something very important. As you know, divorce always comes down from to money. And so how you guys are going to work out how the payments are going to be made, how are we going to get on a payment program, who's going to how we how we sending them in. The more specific you can be, the less uh, likely you will run into complications. And again, we're trying to limit yeah. conflict. Uh, in a divorce. If there's domestic violence involved, if you have a spouse with addiction or any other kind of uh, problems, I I can tell you, I, I don't recommend it. Um, I think at that point for safety, everybody kind of has to go their other way. And I talk from personal experience, but I always tell people, if you can make it work and the both of you are on the same page, Try it. What, what's the worst that can happen? It doesn't work. But again, you know, you, you can even explain things to the kids. Listen, we're going to try this out. Let's see how it works. And here's how the team is going to work. I'll stay here these days. Then, you know, the other person will come in here uh, these days and we'll try it out. And if we can make it work, we get to stay. And if not, We'll look for something uh, else. And guess what? You get a new room, maybe two new rooms. <laughs> and and you make it fun for kids where they think they're getting something different out of mm -hmm. it. They get some extras. Yeah, listen, when, when, when I moved, I remember showing my kids what was going to be our new home. And I said, go pick a bedroom. Mm -hmm. And then I handed them my phone and they're like, what's this? I go, well, we got to decorate, don't we? So where are we going <laughs> to find like stuff to, to decorate? And so all of a sudden, it, I'm going to go back to the hashtag, we were building back better and building new. Yeah. And they get to design something that, that they wanted. And 
So these are these are just little things that we can do to to navigate these. But again, it, you know, the, the whole nesting thing is it's very individualized. Yeah. And I know for some people it has worked. And I know for some people they, especially when they got on with their lives, they're like, well, I met somebody. Oh, Alyssa, I can't bring them back. Like, what am I supposed to do? You know what? This isn't working for me. I need my own place. Yeah. And I, I understand that um, kind of thing. It's so, going to be a lot of check-ins about the state of our union. <laughs> it's it's going to have to require that you schedule time to talk about. I recommend maybe taking a walk together so you're side by side and that you're scheduling time to work out what's working, what's not working, what do we re need to renegotiate if they decide to take that step. And what people's priorities are. Yeah. I mean, that's really what it comes down to. If your priority is to stay in that house because it's economically feasible, okay, great. Well, if you do, I always say you have pros and cons to everything. You know, list what all the pros are. Here are some of the cons. All right, can these cons be worked out? Can we come to an agreement on how we both can work for this? I always say, I know lawyers don't, some lawyers don't like me using the word compromise, mm -hmm. but I say, I'm all about the compromise. And I'll tell you why. It's like when my kids want to wear clothes that, you know, that are ripped and off the shoulder and this, and that's the age we live in. I'm like, okay, we're going to compromise. You can wear it. However, we're going to kind of incorporate some stuff. Like you have to wear a tank top underneath that. It can't be past you know, your knee or something like that. You want to wear it. Okay. We're going to, we're going to, we're going to meet halfway. And if we each meet in the equal distance, guess what? Everybody wins. Well, in a divorce, I guess there's no real winners per, per se, but again, you can limit conflict by everybody compromising to what's going to work for everybody. And if it's not working, guess what? Then we go and we try something new that might work. Great. Great. So you have walked us through. This is awesome. You've given us so much information. Like it's not a failure that you're coming to an end. It's a new start. We just need to do a little reframe. We can survive letting our children know we can survive negotiating it. Tell me about a part that you're familiar with, which is the grief of the relationship ending. Because I think that just like you're saying, there's not enough media attention to divorce. I don't think as a therapist, there's enough attention to the grief of divorce. It's like we talk about, you know, it's okay to have this grief when someone dies. It's the death of your relationship and everything has changed. Just like so many of the stages of grief, I have to deal with now me being an individual. My environment changes. The people that hang out with me, I call it, you lose them in the fire. The friends that don't like hang out with you guys anymore. And there is this metamorphosis that you're saying is great, that it can be positive, but I have to be able to go through the grief of something that I didn't anticipate and none of us like change, right? So how did you manage that? Or what are you seeing that successful people are doing to grieve the loss of their relationship? You can't be afraid to be raw and just let all those emotions just kind of uh, come out of you. It's, it's almost like it may feel like a tsunami of, of different emotions. I, I always tell the story that I remember after I filed for a divorce and I knew I was not going back, I had, um, I had this walk-in closet in my old home. And I remember I would go in there and I would lay on the floor in a ball, paralyzed, mm -hmm. sobbing. Like, I think the, the, the carpet was soaking wet. You would think like a, a pipe burst in there or something. And I just, I, I, I just couldn't move. And um, at some point I realized I had to start getting motivated and, and start getting, getting my life back. I had two kids to take care of. I was running a magazine. And uh, so I had people that relied on me professionally and, and, and personally, and I had to get it together. And so how do you do that? I started talking to somebody and I also had a friend that was, I grew up with, that was a therapist that I had turned to a lot. And um, when they said to me, how are you feeling? I would just let it all out there. I was not afraid to say, I'm too proud, I'm this. No, I just let it all out. And I came to going through that, we'll go back to that word clarity. And I realized how wrong my situation was for me. 
And I realized also that the more I, I mourned it and I realized what was happening and I realized why I was sad about this, I also, again, got clarity of all the things I wanted going forward. And that really helped me kind of dust myself off and say, we're done with this. We're done with this part of it. Mm -hmm. You move into things like anger, which of course, again, very natural. And then you start moving into all the other phases. And I remember that feeling of like crossing the finish line of acceptance. It was euphoric. I mean, it was amazing. And that's when I knew I had to do something to create a space and a platform that didn't exist in the world of journalism to help others. And I tell people, it's okay to be sad. How long am I going to be sad? I don't know. We are, we're all so different. Mine lasted X, X amount of time. I don't remember how long, but it was, it was a good few months. And I would say, oh yeah, I was in a daze and a fog. People would be talking to me. I'd be like, what? Um, what? Oh, sure. Yeah. I don't remember what they would say at the time, but you know what? At some point, I started, I started getting into these other phases. And then all of a sudden, once I was in this better place, it was like, there's like, there's no stopping you. Um, and does life look different? Oh yeah, a lot different. That was the first thing a therapist said to me um, when I started this journey, we were walking into her office and she's like, just so you know, I know you said you're going through a bad divorce and you are gonna start this journey one way and come out looking really different. And she turned around and she goes, but different is good. Mm -hmm. And I was like, again, I was kind of in that, that yeah. fog. I am a completely different person. And I think for the first time, I really like me and I love me. And it doesn't mean that I don't have my challenges or my good days, bad days, but um, I, I have a whole different mindset now. So, so tackling everything is very different than what it once was. And people will get there. They, they really will. But we live in a world of immediacy yeah. and because yeah. of social media. So everyone thinks I post it, I get my instant likes, I get my instant responses. It doesn't work that way with something like this. You have to give the process time. And I don't know how long that time will be. It's so different for everybody. Yeah. yeah. But your story will be um, somebody will be a way to help somebody else because there'll always be somebody before you, somebody alongside going through it with you and somebody after you. And um, so I tell people, trust me, you are going to be a role model and a support for somebody else because you'll get to a different place. And then trust me, it's going to be somebody else's turn. And that's when you can go in and, you know, use, use your, your journey to help somebody else. What a beautiful story of resilience and modeling that you go through the feelings. You don't go around them. You don't like sideswipe them. You don't go underneath them. You walked through them. And in the times that you needed support, you reached out, which is strength and vulnerability, not weakness. And you let yourself feel your feelings so that you were a survivor and a warrior on the other side. And then you're handing off your lessons to those of us that can look to you for a role model. I, I'm so impressed with the work that you do and that you give so much of yourself to your audience because it would be easy just to kind of like step aside and distance yourself from it and be like, so those of you going through a divorce, what is that like for you? But you're like, let me get in there. Let me show you my like scars and you can be like me on the other side. And I'm I'm so incredibly grateful that you've been willing to share your story and create something so important out of such a difficult part of your journey. So thank you for all that you do. No, and thank you. And it's, it's, I love the feedback that we get and the questions and the comments. And uh, somebody once asked me, what was the greatest, what was the greatest um, compliment you got? And I said, from my kids. Aww. My kids were unfortunately in the middle of a very difficult situation and it came two separate times. But one time I was, I was picking one of my, my girls up. She was coming back from a competition from a sporting event. And so she proceeds to tell me how one of the kids on her team is talking about their parents' divorce and the dad, and he was abusive and all this other stuff. And I said, oh my, oh my God. And she was just like, yeah, mom, like, why would she tell us all this? And I said, well, maybe because, uh, you know, 
that 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 they felt that there was like community and team and family in that in that moment. I said, Did you go over to them? And my 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 daughter said yes. And I said, I'm so proud of you. And I I cry every time I I say this story. And I said, What did you say to her? See, I'm crying. And she said, I know how to help you. Let me help you. And she's like, How? She goes, I'm gonna introduce you to my mom. Oh. See, I cry. And my other daughter says the same thing because she has a good friend going through a divorce. And she came in my room and she told me, mom, I have a really good friend going through a divorce. She just found out. She goes, mom, please, please, you got to help them. And I mean, what greater compliment? See, I cry. I cry every time I say it because, you know, yes, my kids are surrounded by divorce because it's what I do now. But they see why we do it. And they see the importance of making sure that everything we put out there is for one purpose, and that is to help people. So people don't have to feel so vulnerable uh, by the whole experience, by the courts, by uh, people dictating or trying to dictate and tell them what to do, by us educating them in a way that everybody can understand. And so again, it goes back to that everybody audience. And I'm very careful with everything that I put out. Nobody gets beat up. Um, that's not what this is about. Divorce happens to everybody, as we explained, but it's really important that we get out there and we explain so people can learn, people can get educated, people can get informed and make really good decisions. And again, hopefully we can limit some of this confusion and conflict. Thank you. Thank you so much for being willing to be vulnerable with me about that. I appreciate that. And you are doing something important. So I, I definitely want to encourage anybody that's listening to this that has a friend, a loved one, them, themselves going through divorce, to check out your resources because there's so much there. And it's a great time to walk and listen to podcasts and get your exercise on and what a good companion they will have in you. So I'm going to put all of the links in the show notes, but talk again about what's your podcast called and where can they find you? So we at, we're actually a syndicated and live stream radio show. Ooh, we go hi, on fancy Saturday pants. Every, Good. <laughs> we go on every Saturday and Sunday. Um, after that, we then become a podcast. Okay. Uh, so everybody can catch it. But it's called The Divorce Hour with Alyssa Panitz. It is on CRN Digital Talk Radio Network. We are on Saturdays uh, beginning at 1 o'clock Eastern, 10 o'clock Pacific. We repeat Sundays at eight o'clock Eastern, five o'clock Pacific. And then we're available on every single podcast platform you can think of. Spotify, iTunes, um, Google Podcasts, Google Home, uh, Alexa, uh, Amazon Music, Amazon Audible. I mean, we're, we, are, we are everywhere. And as I remind people a lot on the show, I am not your JD, your PhD, your CPA or your CDFA. <laughs> I am your ways and your GPS. And I am guiding you through this whole thing with interviews, information, and, and people sharing their knowledge. And even if you get one takeaway from every episode or every column, it may be the only one you need, and that can make a big difference in your situation. So we interview everybody, um, therapists, attorneys, uh, real estate professionals, financial professionals, dating coaches, life coaches, and we, we, we talk about anything and everything. Sometimes we just talk about celebrity stuff because yeah. uh, everybody loves celebrity and it's my background. And sometimes we just have conversations about, about a, a lot of different things. Like I said, music, it has so many positive affirmations. And I always encourage people to find a, a song that becomes their mantra. Mm -hmm. Mine is Kelly Clarkson, Stronger. I'm okay. telling you, she wrote it for me. <laughs> she just doesn't know it yet. Um, but, but find something that, that speaks to you. And when you're having those, those down moments, keep playing it. Uh, we talked a lot about it in last week's episode. You know, keep playing it over and over. Uh, really pay attention to the words. Just don't like, you know, hum the music. Like really pay attention. Really listen to those, those words. And um, so we're, we're always talking about something. And I say this is the topic that has lots of layers, but no bottom. There's always something to talk about. And we make sure that we cover all our bases with talking about laws in all different states, all different situations, all different phases of a divorce, the planning, the in the thick of, the after. Um, we, we're, we're never going away. I'm 
definitely here to stay. Good. And I hope that you continue to keep giving us that clarity about divorce because that is definitely as a therapist, the reframe that I want all of my clients to be able to have about this very important topic. And so thank you again, my friend, for coming on and, and giving us some of your wisdom and your energy because I love being in your presence. So thank you so much for hanging out with us. Thank you for having me. Thanks for tuning into The D-Spot. Find me, Dr. Dana McNeil, and my guests on social media using the links down below. Subscribe for new episodes weekly and leave a comment letting us know how and if you can relate or what topics you'd like us to cover next. See you next time. And don't forget, going to therapy is cool.